Hi, I'm Dr. Francis Yahia, and I'm continuing with the Archetypal Astrology series. Today, we're going to be talking about the Mars glyph in your chart, also known as the Creator Archetype. This is the most important and most misunderstood archetype that we have in our chart because the creator is associated with divine will and purpose as well as ego. And we see a lot of complications with people that create conflict and drama in life um, rather than following passion or creating the life that they're here and intended to create. So this is a very misunderstood archetype because of its relationship to the ego. First, let's go to the mythology. Now what we're talking about is Zeus and Hera, king and queen of Olympus, have two children. They have Ares, which is the creator, or Mars glyph, and Hephaestus, which is the everyday man and is looked at as the Chiron in the chart. And we're going to explain the relationship. So if Zeus and Hera, the king and queen of Olympus, have two children. One is the preferred child, which is Ares or Mars, and the other child, Hephaestus, is kicked to the bottom of the ocean. I'm not going to spend too much time because we're going to do the Chiron series, but the Ares is viewed as the preferred child. In one way, he is the preferred child because it's the divine will and purpose that we're all here to do. However, in our psyche, it's also viewed as the will that is sort of tempered at the terrible twos when the child wants to impart and impose his will on the world and the parents either hold it back and suppress it or allow him permissibly to sort of blow up his, his life. So this is an aspect of ourself that's always at odds of how much fire should I use, how fearless or how fearful should I be? And it's linked to choice and passion and conflict and drama and the stuff that life is made of. So being the preferred child of Zeus and Hera, it has an important placement in our psyche. Because his brother Hephaestus, that I am going to use as Chiron in the example today, is linked to our primary wound of abandonment, rejection, worthlessness. Um, these two planets or archetypes in the, in the chart and in our psyche work to cover the other. So if the wound is Chiron or the everyday man, the commoner, then it is our ego or our creator archetype that kicks into overdrive so that we don't do what I call FOFO, fear of being found out. No one really identifies or knows that we have a real deep wound um, related to our self-worth that we don't want anyone to find out. So we'll, we'll see that relationship in the chart. So we're talking about the creator from the planetary archetype. It's the Mars glyph in your chart and the Greek gods are Mars and Athena, um, or Aries and Athena. So Aries is the god of war, and this is the area in our life that we fight for. Wherever you have Mars in your chart is the area or the battleground where you will fight. However, Athena is the wisdom. Athena is the strategy. And the high consciousness of this planet, of this archetype, is to identify when it is appropriate to use conflict, brute strength, assertive aggressiveness, and when is the strategy to pull back, to be more covert, when to really emphasize and be more overt. And that's the wisdom in the higher consciousness of wine and blood that we're gonna see in the creator archetype. So we're dealing with the low consciousness. Um, we're dealing with right here, this is the, the Mars glyph and its counterpart is the, the trickster. So the creator or trickster. And what we deal with at the low consciousness is here the ego and the trickster. The trickster stays the same as we saw with the Mercury archetype or the trickster class. So we're talking about the Mars glyph. Now notice how it is a circle. The circle and symbolism is always spirit. And it has an arrow. It means that your spirit has a direction. Your spirit has a divine will. It has a divine purpose. It knows where it's going. 
if the divine will and purpose, if the high consciousness of the creator archetype kicks in and is not weighed down by the ego, the ego is simply taking a ride on this, um, on this aspect of your psyche. So we've covered the hero archetype, which is the sun glyph, and we've covered the caretaker archetype, which is the moon glyph in your chart. This all started at conception. We were rooted, all of us, on desire. So you can look at some of my other videos on the truths. Truth two, the spiritual truth two is truth of desire. That is going to be the crux of what eventually turns into the shadow work. That's going to be what really liberates you from this ego. But understanding just for the moment, we all are rooted on desire. Some desire um, was experienced at your conception. The first split in the psyche is male, female, masculine, feminine. I'm talking energy. I'm not talking gender. From that split, the trickster emerges and he's constantly giving you a different shift in perspective, usually a low consciousness around the story, the narrative, the, the players in your life. So this is the crux of everybody's psyche. Now we're into this bracket. The bracket are all of the archetypes and they're viewed as glyphs in the astrology chart. Today, we're just talking about the ego or the creator mask. These are all masks. Eventually, once we go through life and around the zodiac over and over and over again, and we start to live out all the different veils and archetypes and start to remove them, what I call the spiritual striptease, we then come back to the heart, to compassion, to love, to kindness, to loving the others, service, et cetera. It sort of wraps up the spiritual truths on my 12 truths of the spiritual path. You wanna try on all the archetypes for size. You want to see your chart, your life, your story, your view, your perspective from all angles. And so the first one is from the ego, or the creator archetype. So we wanna look at the low conscious of it and the high consciousness. So this is the mask that in this particular class we're going to talk about. So the two low level consciousness are rock and water. And I want to repeat, we need a low level consciousness. This is, this is um, connected to our earthly nature, to having to pay our bills, to having to sleep, to poop, to have sex, to live an earthly life. You cannot. It is impossible to not have a low level consciousness. Turning your cheek when someone is stabbing you is not a high consciousness. That's just stupidity. So let's not confuse one thing with the other. Unified consciousness is the goal of the lifetime. And we need to really embrace and understand our lower nature. And so the thing I see most in practice, especially with people that are unraveling or doing shadow work is that they don't go deep, 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 deep into really understanding all of the low nature of all of the archetypes. So on my website, you can get the levels of consciousness for each of the, the signs. So if you wanna go through each, each planet or each archetype, or I share them on each of these videos. So now we're talking about Mars. You have four level, two levels of consciousness and, and, and four options. You're living in your low level consciousness of your creator archetype or your Mars archetype. You're gonna be leaning more towards conflict, um, over power, conflict, drama, perhaps very passionate um, impulsivity. And then of course the flip side are the passive aggressive, more of the covert manipulative, um, you know, fearful people. So either way you live out the low consciousness is, is, is ego based. And so the wolf in sheep's clothing and the sheep. So wolf in sheep's clothing is you're sort of manipulating behind the scenes. Maybe perhaps you're acting like you're a sheep, but really you're just the wolf. And the sheep is that you're letting others uh, lead and you're just following the lead and not really following like the Mars glyph, the circle with your direction of your life. This habit begins, it's all inherited at conception, but around two years old where the child is exercising that will. So we really learned, do we have permission more so to create or do we have more of, a, of an inner conflict or, or, or externalized conflict? 
So we have to understand that the ego is necessary. It can never fully be dissolved. There are moments like dark nights of the soul where you're in an ego dissolution state, but you will get out of that and repackage yourself and put your ego veil and, and chosen mask on once again. So this notion of no low consciousness, no conflict never ever will exist. Conflict will exist forever. It is a part of life. It is a must in life because it is with conflict that you could create. It is with conflict and creation and passion that your divine will and purpose is how you find in life what you're here to, to do. Now, the high consciousness of your creator archetype or your Mars glyph is the sacrificial lamb and the highest, which we, what we hope to achieve is the golden fleece that comes from mythology. The fact that you're king of your castle, you're, you're king on your throne. You are making good choices, honoring your value system, honoring your what you value, what you believe in, and not self-betraying. So you learn with this archetype how to use your fire, how to use your passion, how to speak up, how to pull back, how to be fearful, how to be fearless, how to be just right. Okay, so this is going to be the primary archetype in which your trial and error in life exists because you're trying to find that perfect Goldilocks measure, if you will, to be the king of your castle and really own your fire. And so we see the element of fire with the third chakra, which is called the Manipura, the crown of jewels, because we want to be king and we want to do what I call man your fires and, and, and own your throne. But we need all four of these levels, or at least the, the, the I should say better, the two levels of consciousness. Thinking that turning the other cheek and loving kindness is always the way to go is not true. You don't show up to a sword fight with a butter knife because you will get killed. So it's learning appropriately how to use your fire, how to exercise your will, and of course, when to pull back that's appropriate. So let's talk about the chart. So this person has um, the Mars, and then here is the Chiron. Let me just take you back. The Chiron is the everyday man or the orphan. And again, we're going to have our own lecture on that, but here it is at the top of the spiritual adulting ladder. When you actually start to go up the ladder, and that's what we're doing here, we're moving up the ladder. When you get here, you get to what I call the wounded ruler, which is when you really, really own all the depths of your wound, of your insecurities, of your worthlessness, and instead of keeping you in exile, you actually come back into the world and, and serve with that wound. But what is keeping you from really knowing your wound is the chase. It's, it's seeking something and the ego and the drive and the Mars and the creator and the passion and the impulsivity and, and the go, go, go. Or for those people that sit on the sidelines, sitting on the sidelines, being the sheep, letting others take the reins. Neither one of those allows you to really understand that you feel orphaned, you feel rejected, you feel worthless, because we all do at the wound. And then the higher consciousness of that is just understanding that you're a commoner, that you're just an ordinary human being and no one wants to be that either. So these two in our chart work together. So in mythology, this is Chiron. Chiron is the teacher of all the gods' children. And he basically um, is our narcissistic injury or our deepest, darkest wound. I've boiled it down pretty much to abandonment, rejection, worthlessness, or someone sort of branding or consuming you in order for you to have an identity. So however you think of yourself, whatever you don't want someone to find out that you feel worthless about or abandoned or rejected from, that is what kicks your ego or this creator archetype into gear. By sign and by house is how you're going to live it. So the creator and the everyday man archetypes are in relationship. You don't want anyone to know that you're just a simple orphan and rejected. So your ego kicks in at the low consciousness. But once you own that you're just human and you have an everyday man experience and you're just one of the masses, you now have joined the ranks of humanity and the creator archetype kicks in, the high consciousness, where now you, by owning your throne and being the king of your castle, give permission to the next and the next and the next. 
And this is how we are all ordinary and original all at once. We hide the wound, which is what we feel orphaned from. Now remember in Zeus and Hera, Hephaestos, which is another way that I teach this, either Chiron who was abandoned by both of his parents or Hephaestos who was the only God kicked out of Olympus, either way is what we're trying to hide. We don't want anyone to find out. So we go fast and furious with that ego, with that identity, with that label, with those things. However, we, we own this creator, this wolf in sheep's clothing. The clothing is a metaphor for whatever covering or label or veil we want. So if you have a Mars in Gemini, it might be extra um, intellectual pursuits. If you have a Mars in Cancer, it might be um, you know, being everybody's mother or caretaker. And it's not genuine is the point until it becomes that the wound is what is serving and that becomes your divine will and purpose. So that's how these two are related. We have to own the wound that we're everyday commoners and then the high consciousness creator kicks in and we can actually come and serve um, thy neighbor, if you will. The problem is we begin to identify with the ego, not the creator and our purpose. I mentioned that the glyph is a circle of spirit with the arrow. If we were to live this in a high consciousness, if we were to understand that this is the drive, the passion, the identity that pushes us forward, that our soul is directed, we wouldn't be so, so attached to not showing the wound. We would openly own that we feel orphaned or rejected or kicked out of Olympus, thrown to the bottom of the ocean or abandoned, but we don't do that. So we get very heavily attached to the veil or the, the sheep's clothing, whether it's material, a label, a title, um, our story, whatever that is. And so part of the unraveling process, part of this, and because it takes Mars two years to go through the entire Zodiac. Every two years, we sort of have a renewal of sorts with this archetype. This archetype, because it takes two years to go through the Zodiac, we are constantly having an aspect of it. Every couple months, you're either being told, you know, through the, through the psyche of the, of the archetype, um, be aggressive, be assertive, pull back, give a little more, give a little less. We're constantly nudged. This is a, a primary, primary archetype that is how we start to feel trial and error our way through life. Also in hopes eventually we can completely own our everyday man, our orphan, our wound, our low self-worth, and we can detach from the label of the ego of this thing, whether it's education or, or sexuality or money or whatever the, 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 the veil is, remove it, own the wound, then we, again, have to repackage ourselves. But now that is just a layer of our psyche. It, it doesn't become the identification with. That's where the ego becomes the problem. So this is all part of the, the shadow work process and the growth process. But in the chart, archetypally, this one is supremely important because you're always kind of nudged with wh what it's doing so that you could try all these different things on for size. So have fun, look at your Mars by house, by sign, by aspect, um, and really see and identify how you wear this mask and, 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 and where you are in the process of, of dismantling and, 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 and rebuilding yourself through this archetype so that the divine will and purpose leads the way and the ego is just sort of like a, a participant um, and not the identification with. Thank you.